Nicole Auerbach has been covering this story closely for The Athletic. You, of course, see her contributions throughout the football season as well here on BTN. She joins us now. Nicole, during the course of this show, a report has come out from the Detroit Free Press saying that the Big Ten has voted to postpone the 2020 college football season, that it will not play in the fall and perhaps would look toward the spring. What can you tell us about where the Big Ten's decision making is on this process? Yeah, I think at this point, everyone's waiting for that announcement and the official word to come. Um, but this is something that, you know, I've thought was possible for a number of weeks. The Big Ten and its commissioner and athletic directors have been very clear-eyed about the, the challenges that were ahead to potentially playing a fall season. Even last week when they announced their schedule, it was very subdued and clear that this was just like, if there's a fall season, this is what we can do to make it happen and add some flexibility. But there's no guarantees. And the second that our medical experts tell us it's not safe to play, we're, re we're willing to pull that plug. And so to me, it's been very clear all along that this was a path that the Big Ten was willing to go down. Um, they were not afraid to go first about getting rid of non-conference games back in July. The Pac-12 very aligned on that decision. Also, from what I'm told, very aligned on this decision. Their presidents meet on Tuesday. What does your reporting tell you about what changed here, Nicole? And I do understand that it was a tepid schedule release at best, that there were caveats all over the place, and they made it very clear that there was still a strong possibility these games wouldn't be played. But they went through the exercise of releasing the schedule, which is something which takes a lot of time and a lot of planning. And now here we are five days later, and there are reports that the season is going to be canceled. So what happened in that time frame? Yeah, I think that, again, there are certain steps along a process to, to get to the point and, and the time frame to make a decision to, to go or no go. Um, and a lot of people were circling, you know, that first week of August as that time period where you needed to decide if you can play a fall season or not. And maybe that time period is a little bit later for some of the leagues that push back the start of their season. But for the Big Ten trying to start on the weekend of September 5th, it makes sense that you needed to make a call right now. I think that you know, obviously there's concerns about Brady Feeney at Indiana and what happened to him and the potential implications, long-term health implications of COVID-19, which we don't know everything about. There are still emerging data and studies being done about heart issues, lung issues, brain damage, and all of these things that it's really hard to say I'm comfortable putting 18 to 22-year-olds in a position where they could be at risk for something that we don't know how it will impact their bodies. So I think, you know, with, with Brady Feeney's mother and what she put out on Facebook, him talking about what he went through, and then also, again, there's more information emerging about, you know, heart conditions and other potential long-term health issues. It just all piles up and gets to a point. Plus, in the Big Ten, obviously, a lot of schools have had shutdowns and pauses Two leagues had entire program quarantines recently. So again, it just kind of all adds up and it gets to the point where you have to ask yourself if you are comfortable under your watch allowing the season to move forward. And it's clear that the answer here was no. And yet you have this pushback now from players. And again, look, it's fair to report that a number of prominent players have said they don't want to play this year and have already publicly opted out. However, there is this large chorus of players, including some would argue the two most prominent players coming back to college football this year in Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields saying, hey, we do want to play and making that clear. So what about this notion of the players saying, you may not think it's safe for us, but we believe it is and we want to play. To, to what extent do you think that that has impacted decision making here in the last 12 hours or so since it became public? I think it's been very difficult all along for administrators and coaches to think about making decisions like that and how it's going to impact their athletes, especially we, we knew that so many of them want to play. That's why they came back to campus. That's why they've been you know, going through all of these medical protocols because they love this sport. They want to play. They wanted to do everything possible to try to make it happen. You know, there have been so many encouraging numbers out of programs during you know, this lead up to fall camp where, you know, a lot of coaches were feeling confident that they were getting a handle on the protocols, testing was happening, and the numbers were low and that this, the, the idea of community spread wasn't really happening. But then you think about adding regular college students to the mix. You think about, you know, 
preseason camp and, and larger team activities in close proximity of each other. So I think that you have all of that come into play. And even though these players are banding together, trying to get their voices heard, because as we know, they don't have a players union. They don't have people advocating on their behalf in you know sitting at the table making these decisions it, it, it's it's a bit of a hail mary because it's coming so late and because these decisions are made for them they're made by you know again local health officials state health officials state governors university presidents obviously who voted on this all of those decisions were going to always be made for the college athletes but i do respect them for getting their voice out there getting their concerns out there and trying to present a unified front Let's say the season were to be canceled, Nicole. What are the considerations then going forward in terms of eligibility, in terms of scholarship limits, in terms of all of these other issues that will come to the forefront? Those are all of the, the big questions right now. You know, it was something that I don't think people wanted to really engage with the possibility of not having a fall season. So some of these decisions, like from an NCAA standpoint, haven't been made yet. It's not like they could say, okay, if the fall is canceled, everyone gets X, you know, eligibility. The most that we've gotten here is that if, if players opt out, that they would get, you know, their scholarship guaranteed for next year. But there's going to have to be a lot of decisions in terms of waivers, in terms of, um, you know, allowances and decisions made about extending eligibility clocks. What, if any, are schools going to be required to provide from a financial aid standpoint if a player comes back next year? Like you mentioned, scholarship um, – like you mentioned, roster sizes, all, all of these pieces are, are going to have to be put together somehow. The Division One Council meets on Wednesday and they were going to be addressing some of these topics. Um, but it might be a few days, potentially weeks till we get a ton of clarity, which is part of the problem here. I think when you know administrators are going to take these final decisions to their players and their athletes, they're going to be asking those questions. They're going to be wondering, OK, if I stay on campus, are we in off-season mode? How many hours do I get to work out? What does this look like? And those administrators may not have all the answers yet. Nicole Auerbach's done an amazing job covering this story for The Athletic. We really appreciate you giving us some of your time. I know it's been really busy, but thanks for all the insights, Nicole, and all the hard work. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. 